Good evening and welcome. Thank you for joining us on uh, this Thursday evening. Uh, we look forward to spending some time with you. Um, we are going to do four testament times here, one a week during Advent. And uh, we're going to be the hashtag, the Methodist Church hashtag for Christmas this year is uh, God is with us. So we're asking each of our uh, guests that question uh, where have they seen God with them or felt God with them in their lives? So please do stay choin- tuned and watch each week. Each week will be uh, uh, made up of uh, an interview with uh, at least one person, uh, with a musical um, p- part as well, and some prayer. And so uh, we invite you to join us each week. We will actually be going through right to Christmas Eve, so uh, that one um, may be a bit, uh, we might do something a bit more fun in there as well with that one. So yeah, stay tuned and join in with us. Please do comment on the YouTube channel and uh, join with us. Today we're actually uh, interviewing Grace, Jordan's going to be interviewing Grace um, at the church face to face, which I think is a first for testimony time. Normally they've been do- done on Zoom, so but today we're going to meet Grace at church. Um, we're all socially distanced, obviously, and uh, and all of that kind of stuff. So, but that's just easier for us today. So that'd be wonderful. Um, yeah. So maybe as you're thinking through and listening to Grace's story, just look back in your own lives and think: Where has God been close to you? Where have you felt God? Uh, maybe make a note in the comment chat on that. So, yeah, so let me just pray uh, and then I'll hand over to Jordan and to Grace. Father, thank you for this time of year where when we look forward to your coming, uh, when we make preparation for Christmas. We pray that as uh, we hear from Grace now that you will speak through her And help each one of us to contemplate, to remind ourselves that you are close by and that you want to be with us. So just uh, help us to have a good session together. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, Tiz, for that uh, introduction. Uh, As you can see, we have Grace here, and we are, I think, quite far enough apart, aren't we, today? Um, I think we're okay. Um, But it is wonderful to have you here today with us, Grace, and we're so privileged to be able to hear a little bit of your story uh, today in in amongst all the lights as we've decorated uh, for this Advent season leading up to Christmas Mm -hmm. as well. But Grace, it'd be wonderful to kind of start to just hear a little bit about your background. Um, So maybe if you can share a little bit about yourself, obviously where you are today and also where you grew up and those kind of the initial details about yourself. That'd be wonderful. Okay. Well, I was born in Belfast, Northern Ireland, a long time ago. (laughs) And I grew up in that city um, in a happy Christian home. Um, No brothers or sisters, Mm -hmm. loving parents, church background, and always a sense that God should be part of our lives. Mm. Uh, I don't think I felt quite included in that. Mm. Although I went to church, it was boring. (laughs) <laughs> and I used to count how many bald heads there were in the congregation. There were quite a lot. <laughs> um, but as I grew up, uh, still at primary school, I felt I couldn't quite get to God. There was like a plate glass division, mm. and I did not know how to get there. And I have to mention that the war came, yeah. and there was a very severe blitz on Belfast. Mm-hmm. And I remember at that time in the air raid shelter thinking, I am not yet ready to die because I haven't really found God. Mm. It was after that that I did start to find him. Do you want me to talk about that now? I'd love you to talk about that. Yeah, well, I think he found me because one Easter Sunday, I was at a girl crusader camp and the question came up, have you asked Jesus into your life? And I thought, no. And I'm not sure. And then the person who asked me, actually, uh, 
she said, I'm talking about you because you've told me that you've got a grandfather who's a minister and all sorts of religious uncles, but we're talking about you and Jesus. And I thought, yeah, this is my chance to find God. And I did say a prayer. And I do know that from that point on, Jesus and God did become real to me. Mm. Although um, it took, you had to get rid of some things that weren't right. Uh, I remember I'd been caught cheating in a French exam. <laughs> that was okay. before, yeah. before. Yeah. And I had to realign my school <laughs> okay. approach mm -hmm. in many ways. Mm. Um, so that was, uh, I was in the country during some time there, which was very happy, mm. outside Belfast. And then later I went to school back in Belfast and went on to university. Right. Okay. Wow. So you mentioned there that you had to kind of change a few things about yourself uh, and kind of maybe your attitude and behavior to French exams. Uh, I can completely understand the temptation there. Uh, I was not good at French myself. <laughs> but was there anything else that changed kind of in your life at, after that point that you, as you said, um, kind of God and Jesus was actually a part of your life? Was there anything else that changed through yes, that? Yes, because there were other Christian girls in school mm. and we wanted to get together to pray. And we did that on a Saturday at the house Brilliant. of one or other. Yeah. And that was very real. Yeah. And no grown up was instructing us at all. And that wow. was good. And we actually were praying for a missionary in Egypt, of all things, wow. because that was the lady who had mm. challenged me mm. when I thought I didn't want to conform to what was she was asking me. Oh, yeah. I see. So mm. she challenged you, and then she went off on mission. Is yes. that right? OK, wow. And so, I mean, at that point, and we won't go into years, but how old were you at that point with the group 12, of girls? 12, Around 12. 12. Yes. And you were meeting every Saturday to pray? Yes. Wow. I mean, that's a challenge for me. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. We'll, but we'll think got... about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, though. That's amazing. And so you were just meeting up as a group of friends just to pray yeah, for others? Yeah, but it and... was very spontaneous. Yeah. So I can't say it was us. It must have been God already mm. saying, mm. I want you to be serious about me. Yeah. Must have been. Yeah. Because, I mean, things got quite rocky after that. Yeah. Don't think it was a very calm journey all the way, yeah. by no means. No, I mean, of no. course, that, I think we've, we've seen that pattern is a lot of people will say the same in, in their testimonies, will say, you know, yes, I gave my life to God. Yes, I became a Christian, whatever yes. phrase. But, you know, life yes. still happens and yes, there's, there's still does. ups mm -hmm. and downs and, yes. and everything like that. And we'll, we'll come to that in a moment. But... You mentioned as well, obviously, growing up in Belfast, but then you were outside of Belfast. Was that during the war? Were you evacuated? Or? Yes, I yes. was. Yes, then, okay. I was just for a few years, but that was lovely. Was I love the country. Nice. <laughs> that's why I live in a village now. Of course, right, yeah. okay. Mm. Amazing, though. Like, because that's obviously a life experience that we have never experienced, mm. kind of in, in this, in my generation. That's something that we've never yes. had to, to go through. So. Yeah, I mean, were you moved in with a Christian household or how did that happen for uh, you? No, with the family was able, we were able to live in the country. Okay, and oh, my, so you moved as a family. My father had, right. had serious work with the government mm. and part of his ministry, ministry is not Christian ministry, but ministry of labour, right. was moved into that area of the country. So he was able to be with us one day of the week and the weekend. Right. So it was very... Providential, actually. Oh, lovely. Yes. So, you, oh, so you, the whole family. And I did have a time yeah. before that when I boarded in school, and uh, I didn't like that. Okay. <laughs> I did a lot of grieving, I think, at that time. Right. Yes. Okay. That's so interesting. So, as you said, you. So, roughly, how old were you when you when you had that crusader meeting out of interest? Twelve. So all yes. in that yes. same year. Good year when you were twelve. It then. was a good year, was indeed. <laughs> so obviously, then you hit your teenage years, yes. uh, and obviously later. So how did that kind of continue for you? Did you stay in Belfast as a family? Yes, or? I went back to Belfast, mm -hmm. and um, I I was there until I was uh, well. I'd finished university actually. I went to university in Belfast. Wow. I did get admission to take medicine, which I'd prepared myself to do. Okay. And then at the last minute, I pulled out. I don't know why I filled out, but mm -hmm. I, I never did become a doctor. Right. So, <laughs> so what... I did study English literature, uh -huh. which was my love. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. good to know that, yeah, it's, uh, it's an mm -hmm. encouragement that it obviously worked out well for you yes. and that you've, you found kind of a passion in that. Yes. So you studied at university and then after that... I became that, a teacher. You became a teacher. In um, Country Town, in Ballymena. 
Nice. And I loved that. Mm -hmm. I was so happy being a teacher there. And how long did you teach for? Three years. Okay. And then somehow there was a verse kept coming into my heart that said, this is not your rest. This is not the place you're meant to stay. Mm -hmm. And I had to prepare myself to give that up yeah. and uh, say to God, if I have to be somewhere else, you'll have to show me. Mm -hmm. And what he did show me was that he wanted me to go to India. Wow. And I thought, oh, hot, parched weather, yeah. and snakes all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather stay in my beautiful garden under the trees. <laughs> wow. But the Lord had his way. Yeah. And he got me to a training college in Glasgow. Mm -hmm. And then I, I went to our church and said, I think our center of our Presbyterian church in Belfast, I said, I think God wants me to be a missionary. And I was weeping. <laughs> wow. And she said, uh, the lady said, well, yes, it looks as if he really does. <laughs> but of course, there were more formalities than that. Mm. And just a couple of years of training, yeah. one of which was in Glasgow, one in Edinburgh. Okay. Cold places. <laughs> Preparing you for the yes. Indian weather, for of course, the for the hot weather. Yeah, yes. <laughs> absolutely. Nice. <laughs> I like that. Mm. Training for that. <laughs> so, see, so obviously, you started teaching, then you went and, into Glasgow, ended up training, and then, so, obviously, you went to India, because I know yes. you speak the language. We went to India at the time when the Suez Canal was closed, so we had an wow. extra long cruise right around South Africa. <laughs> wow. I mean, <laughs> and, a, and an unexpected stop in Cape Town, okay. where a colleague from Missionary Training College mm -hmm. happened to have a dad who was a shipping agent, mm -hmm. who happened to know our ship had come into port because somebody had to have appendix, appendectomy. And she came to meet me at the boat and took me around Cape Town till we left again in the evening. Was that not very gracious of God? I think unexpected so. Unexpected visit yeah. and unexpected to mm. a guide. Mm. I mean, that's beautiful. That, yeah, and you obviously yes. got to tie in. Maybe, maybe that his, was his gift back to you as you'd, you'd left your love of teaching yes. to then follow yes. him. That's so interesting, though, that you, you just really felt called. Even, even though you were in a really happy, good place, you knew yes. it wasn't the right place. That's yes. so mm -hmm. fascinating to hear. So you ended up in India. So was that, you travelled on your own? Obviously, you went with other yes. trainees, but you went on your own at yes. that point. Yes, yes. Wow, okay. So then you ended up in India. And yes. what kind of work were you doing there? Well, actually, I was teaching. I was using my own skills in right. a college, a Christian college uh -huh. in Bombay, uh -huh. College of Bombay University. Mm -hmm. And I had responsibility after a while for women students in a hostel. Yes. And a lot of work uh, alongside these young people. Yes. And there were great opportunities to talk about faith. Mm. And actually, even, and that was quite unusual, um, there was a college chapel and even the women missionaries preached there, which launched me in suddenly uh, to a career that was also something that developed later. Yeah. Right. Wow. And so, obviously, being in India, which, because I know they have uh, lots of different languages and dialects, which language was the kind of primary one that you had to well, use in Bombay? Well, I was teaching in an English-speaking college, oh, okay. but yeah. they required me to learn Hindi. Right. So straight away I was sent up to the hill station where you learned Hindi. Mm -hmm. And that was really tough because most students had a year to do it. But I only had three months plus some time back in Bombay with the tutor. But I wow. did the exam and I got it. Wow. And the day when I finished that, they said, you better start Gujarati because our mission worked mainly in Gujarat. <laughs> so that was different from Hindi with a different script. But I had another year doing that plus the teaching. Wow. And uh, it was very... People said, how do you manage with the climate? Mm. They wrote to me from home. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, I said, well, actually, I haven't had time to notice the climate. I'm so busy. Yeah. But it was very hot. I bet it was. And there was actually no air conditioning where I was staying. Yeah. But we got through, yeah. And wow. I loved it. I loved India. Yeah. So from the uh, 11, 12-year-old girl that was cheating on a French exam, you ended up <laughs> learning multiple languages in yes, India indeed. in the space of about a year and a half. I mean, that's amazing. God is it powerful. A, yes, he is. He did. <laughs> that's incredible. So how long were you in India for? And were there any kind of specific memories that you have from that time that really stand out for you? Oh, yes. I bet. I, I bet was near the end mm. of the four years and... Um, I was one day crossing the road carefully uh, and I said to the Lord, perhaps 
after four years and a year of furlough at home, that's mm -hmm. what they did then, right. perhaps I should offer to go up country to one of the schools and uh -huh. work there. Uh -huh. And before I'd got across the road, the Lord had spoken in my heart mm -hmm. and astonished me. Mm -hmm. I've, I really can't make any sense of this, but the message I got was, I'm going to give you a beautiful marriage. <laughs> and okay. I said, thank you, but I was dazzled and... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Astounded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, well, it all worked out. It happened okay. without any uh, very much input from the side of either Frank or wow. myself, because the Lord appointed us to get together, wow. and it was very romantic. Okay. So yes. you met in India in uh, our the, just in the last couple of months of my right. four years there. Um, he and I met, and uh, knew from that time that this was what God wanted. And our wow. dates of leaving India were within a week of each other, organized by different organizations ages before. Uh -huh. But our destination coincided too, because I was going to s travel by sea mm -hmm. uh, to Naples and then spend a few days in Rome mm -hmm. with my same friend from Cape Town who was working with now with students in Rome. And my fiancé was... Um, had a headquarters of his organization in Rome, and he was flying into Rome three days later than I would have arrived. Wow. So, arrivederci in Roma. <laughs> Absolutely. It's uh, amazing. And then we went to Belfast, where I had asked my parents, could you arrange to have the marriage set up, please? Thank you. And, and so they organized happened. it back at yes, home? Yes, yes. For you just to arrive and go, wonderful, <laughs> well, let's walk in and let's get married. There were three weeks in between. OK. But oh, wow. <laughs> So then you were married in Belfast. Then we were married, and he was back in his his work was in India. Okay. He was a lovely Christian, right? But he was working with United Nations Development. Wow. So that meant we were going to stay abroad, yes. and we both knew it was a continuation yeah. of what I had been sent abroad to do. Wow. In a different setting. Okay. So you both travelled back via Rome to Belfast. I mean, that yes. in itself is an incredible <laughs> sentence. But you got married in Belfast, and then you went back to India. And God found us a house. And God found you a house yes. to stay in As he in always India. did everywhere we went. Brilliant. <laughs> so how long were you in India for at that point? Well, I don't know. Different. Mm. I'll give you the total that I was 18 years in India altogether. Wow. OK. Yes. But it, we had a, three years in Rome in the middle of those years. Okay. Soon they will learn some Italian. <laughs> Brilliant. How, I mean, how many languages do you oh, now? A few. Okay, a few. Oh, I yes, like that. and I had to learn. My husband came from the Netherlands. Okay. And he said, I'd like you to learn Dutch. And I said, oh, and you said you loved me. And I've just done two Indian camps. <laughs> but Dutch wasn't so bad. <laughs> yeah. So you, you spent some time there, obviously, traveling. It sounds like here, there, and everywhere. But I'd love to know, were there any... Obviously, it sounds like God massively blessed yourselves in lots of different ways, like mm -hmm. through the language you're learning, through the different houses bringing you together. But I'd love to know, in your time in ministry there, and I'm, there will be lots, but would you just be able to maybe share one kind of great story from one of your travels or, or times in mission together? I, I want to talk about this one because it's yeah. Christmas. Yeah, and, brilliant. Um, the first year I was in India at Christmas, mm. I did my one and only phone call home on Christmas Day. Wow. And that was painful in the sense that of you course. put the phone down. Mm. You had to go into the GPO to do it. <laughs> and um, I thought, I'm not going to phone home again. Mm. This was in days of ancient history, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So the next year, I decided I'd go and stay with friends in up country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the train... Uh, journey is usually overnight in India. Mm. Well, it's 24 hours sometimes. But this was a train that would get in to a country place at uh, five in the morning. Right. And luckily I was awake and I did get off the train yeah. at uh, Anand, I think it was called. Yeah, yeah. And um, you, there weren't taxis. You had tongas, horse-drawn tongas. So you got into one of these. I got into one of these. And it, the train was out, gone away, and there was no more noise. And it was a quiet, starlit night mm. in a very quiet town. And as we went through the rather dusty street, it, the horses' hooves were very quiet on such a dusty road. And the houses were mostly in the dark. And they were simple village houses where people kept their animals, their goats or cows, at one end of the house, and they lived at the other. And we went up the silent street with the stars overhead and no sound. And then suddenly, as we passed, one door opened 
and you so there were cattle inside hmm. and I heard the cry of a baby wow. and I thought, am I not back in Bethlehem? Yeah. Is not this the moment when we began, our planet was visited mm. by Almighty God mm. coming in the form of a newborn baby in an unknown village mm. in a quiet, starlit night. Mm. And I thought, it is so amazing to be in a place where it's almost like a reenactment of the scenario of mm. 2,000 years ago. Wow. That was a moment of real truth. Yeah. Where I felt very close to God. Wow. Yes. That's beautiful just to have, yeah, that kind of, yeah, reflective moment of yes. seeing that. Wow. That kind of, yeah, the, the classic nativity mm. image there. That's beautiful. Because I did feel in India, mm. being in the country, not so much the city, that it is more the... Um, background of what mm. the Bible's talking about. Yeah. Very simple village life and mm. people just struggling to survive mm. in harsh circumstance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I felt very closely mm. related to the people there. I loved them so much. Oh, little town of Bethlehem how still we see the light above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light the hopes and fears of all the years are matching stars together proclaim the holy birth and praises sing to God the King and peace to men on earth for Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above while mortals sleep the angels keep their Watch your wondering love How silently, how silently The wondrous gift is given So God imparts to human hearts The blessings of his hand No ear may hear his coming in this world of sin where meek souls will receive him still the dear Christ enters oh holy child of Bethlehem descend to us we pray cast out our sin and enter in be born in angels the great glad tidings tell oh come to us abide with us our lord emmanuel oh come to us abide with us Okay, so we've, yeah, we've kind of brushed around that topic. So we had all those years in India. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And then? And then, well, what, what was the next stage for you? For well, you having done three years in Rome, yep. and then been back in India for another five or six years, I've yep. forgotten. We'd moved from Bombay to Delhi, yep. which was very cosmopolitan and yep. lovely. And again, I was so happy in India until one day, and I was teaching in different schools there, mm -hmm. German schools, French schools, and I taught a lot of Russian diplomats, which was interesting. Wow, okay. Privately. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was... Uh, then we were told, you're going to move to Bangkok. 
And that was of a course. shock. Yeah. I really had to struggle with that. Yeah. And we had a few, a month or two in Nepal on the way. And that was a sort of transfer from a Hindu background into a Buddhist background mm -hmm. and to get ready for living in um, Bangkok. Mm -hmm. And we went to Bangkok and the Lord kindly arranged, uh, I shouldn't say arranged because we had to wait and have faith, but we did find the right house and we knew it was what was right for us in a lovely place, I have to say. Mm. And um, I was very happy there and also had a lot of teaching there to do and Bible groups and um, some preaching. And um, it was just so amazing mm. to be able to fit into a quite different culture mm. and feel, again, it's a place I'm meant to be, we're meant to be. Mm. And Frank travelled a lot, and occasionally I got to travel with him <laughs> to lovely, interesting places yeah. like Indonesia wow. and quite long periods in China okay. where he was one of the first of the Western um, UN people to be seconded to look at programmes there. Wow. I was so fascinated by China. Mm. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you, you're very well travelled. You've oh, kind I'm of terribly well travelled. I was going to. You've covered <laughs> most of the globe there already. So we're thinking about this concept, uh, as Tiz mentioned before, about God is with us, and we're leading up to that, celebrating that at Christmas. But for someone that has been kind of all over the globe doing mission work and, and following um, kind of His guidance, yeah, what has it meant for you throughout your years to have God with you, Grace? What has yes. that meant for you? Yes. Well, I'll take you back to the time when we lived in India as a family. There mm -hmm. were three children and we were living in Delhi. Yeah. And um, I got word that my mum was very ill. Yeah. Seven years before that, I'd also been called home from Rome when she was very ill. But God miraculously extended her life. Wow. One day she was expected to die that evening, and the next morning she was sitting up in bed because God had intervened. Wow. And I knew he was present and had mm. allowed her to still be there as a grandma to the children mm. for some more years. But this was the time when I knew it was going to be the end, and I was in Belfast, and it was in December, and she passed away in hospital, mm -hmm. and I was with her, and I went back to the house, the empty house. My father had died earlier. And um, it came up to Christmas, and um, I was having Christmas Day alone in the house. Oh. And actually, it was full of the presence of God. Wow. I had lovely memories of my mother. And of course, there was, there was a mourning and a sadness, yeah. but we knew that she had gone to a, a more beautiful home, home to her beloved Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. And my mum, by the way, was Canadian. So she had done a lot of adjustment in her life too. Wow, okay. But she was now in glory. And I had a day of silence and happiness with the Lord, mm -hmm. except that my heart was in India as yeah. well. And I couldn't get back there. Oh. Because I tried all the airlines and they'd nothing for two or three weeks. Everybody wow. seemed to be traveling. Yes. And having got through that day, with a sense of, I am not alone in this house. The Lord is with me, mm. and he is a, a help in time of trouble. And by the evening, I committed to him my big problem. How do I get back to India? I need to get back. My family needs me. Of Children course. are young, and I have a job that I have to get back to soon. And please, Lord, would you arrange this? Mm. And um, I went to bed thinking it's going to be all right. Mm. And at six in the morning, the phone called. I thought, oh, good, God's calling me back. <laughs> 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 because your brain is a bit befuddled at that time. Right, yeah, So I got the phone, and it was a friend. And he was the brother of a wonderful Christian neighbor we had, mm. South Indian family in India. And he had been spending Christmas with them. And he and his wife, who both were doctors, had just flown back and arrived in, Belf in Belfast. And they said, or oh, were they still in London? Anyway, he said, we've brought all your Christmas cards. Frank gave them to us so that you would get them. And we'll come and see you in the evening. Aww. And by the way, have you got any booking to get back to India? Because they're waiting for you. And I said, no, I've even tried through Dublin and everywhere. And there's nothing free at all. And he said, oh, I've got an arrangement. I have a friend. And this was not underhand. Yeah, um, yeah. This doctor and his wife. 
um, they, ha they let me know that it could be possible for me to, in the next day or so, to uh, get to London and to pick up a ticket from his friend in Shepherd's Bush and I would be flown to India, at my expense, of course, uh, directly, m so much more quickly than we could have thought of. Wow. So what I thought is, mm. the Lord was with me in a day of silence yeah. with his wonderful presence and the stillness. Mm -hmm. But then he is also a God who is present with us in intervention. Mm. And he causes circumstances to work together for good mm. in ways that you could not have imagined to provide an answer and a supply to bless us. And I hope this testimony doesn't sound as if it was always just to bless me because there was a beautiful hymn written by an Indian convert that said, if there is aught of worth in me, it comes from thee alone. Then keep me, Lord, keep me safe for so thou keepest but thy own. Mm -hmm. And God is looking after us because we're part of his kingdom and his workforce. Yeah. And he needs us to be in the right place at the right time. Absolutely. And he is a God who is with us, yeah. multiply and terribly with us, <laughs> in trouble and in success. Yeah. And it's amazing, isn't it? It absolutely is. Mm -hmm. I, that I can fully agree with. Yes. So just as we kind of bring to a close, Obviously, someone who has traveled the globe and has seen marvelous things and been through wonderful, crazy, exciting things too. How did you end up in little old Waltham Chase? How did that happen? Um, well, we were after we'd had our lovely years in Bangkok and traveling around Asia, yeah. um, we were posted to Kenya. This is filling in. And that was a, a marvelous thing too. Brilliant. And on our last, we had a house that part of the roof was flat. And Frank and I used to stand at sunset in the rare times when he was at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would stand there and uh, have a prayer uh, looking out to the horizon and say, Lord, guide us to the right place mm -hmm. after we retire, because it could be anywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, it didn't get answered the way I thought, because by now our children were, uh, had been finishing their studies and getting settled back in England. They'd been back here studying. And um, we would like, I think we had a pied -a -terre in Bristol, but we didn't know where God wanted us to go. So we, <laughs> something happened totally unexpectedly. Mm. We'd stayed with friends in Belgium and they, we, they teased us and said, you need a house here. It'll be nice and near Holland. And you can see Frank's family. Mm. His, par well, his parents had died, but his brothers and sisters. And we'd even, I thought, in fun, looked at houses in Belgium. And I was in Bristol with my daughter. And Frank had gone back to Belgium. And he phoned in the evening. He said, I've got a house. I've got the right house. It's absolutely lovely. Mm. And I've even been able to pay the down payment on it. <laughs> now, and we'd never owned a house practically in the years. Wow. And um, I spent the evening crying oh. because I wanted to be home with the family. Yeah. And uh, then I suddenly remembered a hymn we'd done in training college mm -hmm. that said, I feel the winds of God today. Mm. Today my sail I lift and I will go. It said um, that I will brave the waves at his behest and dare another cruise. And I thought, I don't want to go to Belgium, but if it is right, I will do it, and I'll do it with peace. So I stopped crying after several hours, and I said yes. And we went and bought, he got a house in Belgium, which again God had designed, I believe, for us. But I thought maybe a year or two, but do you know we spent 10 years there? Wow. 10 years when God used my husband amazingly to bring people to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. he, was, he wasn't... Um, in your face evangelist. Mm -hmm. It was a person who, that people came to and said, what's your secret? And they found Jesus. Wow. And at the end of that, we said to each other, we need to go back to England to the children. And we said, and if it doesn't work out, neither of us is to blame the other. So we came with a whole heart, a beautiful heart. And um, my daughter, who lived nearby mm -hmm. um, in the south of England, mm -hmm. in a place called uh, Shedfield. Uh -huh, yeah. She said, I'll look for a house for you. And she said, I've uh, found one. It's very nice. I think it would suit you, but it's rather near a church. But I don't <laughs> think she said, but. <laughs> and the house that was designed for us, we found it and we said yes. And we found its name was already in Dutch. 
by English family who had got that name from close Belgian friends. Right. And the name of the house was Eindelijk, which means at last. And we moved wow. to this place already 22 years past from now. Yes. Wow. I mean, we and we can almost see God it. And that with us <laughs> yes. all the way. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you ended up. And so you've been yes. there ever since. That's amazing. Yes. And I mean, God has used you in this church. I've heard many people God talk about like. that <laughs> as well um, over the years and, and said wonderful things, how you have blessed them as well. Um, but your humility demands I don't talk about that, so that's fine. Um, has there ever been any particular Bible passages or yes. that have kind of sustained you or helped you? Very much so. Mm. Um, I think the very basic one is from the book of James, mm -hmm. chapter 4, verse 8. And it, the old version is, and I, of course, grew up in the old version, um, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Beautiful. And I thought, yes, there has to be a time when you draw near to God yeah. and he will come near to you. The other one was from Luke 10, verse 19, where Jesus was sending the disciples out on a mission. Mm -hmm. And because they were going, he said, I will give you power over all the power of the enemy yeah. and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Mm -hmm. So he didn't say it won't be tough. And there will be serpents and scorpions. They came in there. Yeah. And our life has had enough serpents and scorpions <laughs> trying to defeat us. Yeah. But I hang on to this verse where Jesus said, I give you authority and power over all the things that come against you and against what, what God's purpose is. Mm. And you don't have to be knocked down under the hurts. You can rise above and say, Jesus is not only my helper, but my healer, mm. and brings me through the difficult times. Yeah. And it's just such a privilege to know that he has called us. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. And he wants to use us. Yes. I mean, there are, are there any specific examples that come to mind of times where things have been getting hard, or there may have been, as you say, a serpent or scorpion, but where God's helped you overcome that? Has there, are there any that come to mind on that? Yeah, there was one story, mm. but this is way back earlier, okay. in the troubled teenage years, Brilliant. where I thought I'd lost God. Okay. And I think nowadays you'd label it depression, but I would label okay. it a uh, beginning me attack. Okay. <laughs> and I said to God, I don't know if you're there anymore. Okay. And this people say also before they come to God, and what you have to do is pray a very simple prayer. And I found myself praying, God, if you are there, if you are real, if you are the living God, will you show me? Mm. Will you demonstrate it? Mm -hmm. And I was so miserable, I didn't want to go on. Wow. And there was some social work that students were allowed to volunteer to do. And I had grimly ag agreed to do this. <laughs> and I went to an inner city part of Belfast to help with a youth group entertain not entertainment but program mm -hmm. on a certain evening yeah. but when I got there the door was locked and I thought this is just what life is doing to me and I said Grr, very yeah. angry yeah of course and then as I stood crossly at that locked door a, two small girls maybe aged nine and seven came up to me and they were really thin and poor there's a lot of poverty and they said in their best, beautiful Belfast voice, <laughs> didn't you know, miss, that there wasn't a meeting tonight because it's St. Patrick's Day? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, well, I'm going home. And they said, and the older girl said, we'll walk you up to the bus stop. And as she walked with me up to the bus stop, <laughs> she said, I want to tell you something. I won't use her voice, but <laughs> she said, you know, there's a mission hall here and I was so unhappy, she said, because our dad was terrible. He'd come in drunk and we had to hide under the table and it was so scary, mm -hmm. she said. But I went to the mission hall, she said, and the lady there said to me, if you ask Jesus into your heart, he will give you courage and he will always be with you and you will be quite, you will be safe. And she said, I did that and he made me brave. And although we, we are not seeing our daddy getting any better, mm. she says, he doesn't attack us anymore. Wow. And she said, and isn't it lovely that Jesus is our friend? Yeah. 
And I thought, I said to God, show that you are the real living God. And you brought these two little girls out of nowhere yeah. into my miserable 18-year-old life. And you restored me to faith. And I don't have to go downhill forever mm. for any more. I will go ahead with you and I'll do whatever you want in the future. Wow. So that was a time when God was very, very real to me. Yeah. From these verses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And from, yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. And, and it's clear that you did. You did then follow through on what you said, that you'd yes. do what you were told. Yes. Um, wow, thank you. Was there anything else, kind of before we finish off, was there anything else you wanted to share or say before we end in prayer? Well, just that I'm very surprised and very grateful that the Lord still has me mm. around and allowed me to have so many beautiful friends yeah. and the fellowship of a wonderful church yeah. that we live almost next door to. Yeah. And I think he knew I would be getting old and decrepit, so it was quite handy that I lived near the church. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Thank you. Well, Thank you. we appreciate you too, Grace, in this church, and we, we, we love you, and you do bless us so much. Um, yeah, there's, there's lots of things I could say, but even just this week, obviously you, you did the preach for our Sunday service and it was just your wisdom is profound and yeah, I know I personally learn a lot from you as well. So you're an inspiration. So thank you. Thank you. But I think it'd be good if we could just pray mm -hmm. uh, as we close off. It'd be wonderful. Would you be able to pray for us as we close? Yes. Thank you. Heavenly Father, it is so wonderful that we can call you Father, mm -hmm. that you have brought us into your family through the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, our Lord. And we ask that you will make your word alive in the hearts of each one of us, mm. and that we will dare to take that step of commitment to you, or perhaps recommitment to you, to enter into the excitement of walking with you and knowing that every detail of our lives is looked after by a heavenly Father who loves us and wants to take us forward into adventures that we haven't dreamed of. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Grace. Thank you. So we're just going to finish this evening. I'm going to hand back to Tiz, uh, who's going to just close off uh, this evening's testimony time. Thank you. Wow. So thank you, uh, Grace, uh, for sharing so much of your story with us. Uh, this evening and for Jordan uh, asking some great questions there and uh, if you would like to know more about God with you then please do get in touch with us um, use the email help at chasemethodist.org and uh, we'll get back to you um, Grace's testimony uh, is certainly a travelled one and a, a deep one but the same God who has been with grace for those journeys wants to be with you and I in our journeys. So let's remember that um, as we travel on. Um, next week, we're going to have uh, a testimony with a young couple, um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. So uh, if you would like to come and join us, we'll be here again next Thursday evening. So do come and hear uh, a very different story, I would imagine but one that has the same God at the centre of it. So thank you very much and see you next week.